Hi guys, I'm back out again for another whale camp and this time I'm in the village of Mitford You know there's an old saying that an Englishman's home is his castle Well there's one over there, it looks empty and I may just claim squatter's rights tonight have it all to myself Mitford Castle was built in around 1070, not long after the Norman invasion of 1066. The castle's a Mott and Bailey type construction, that's a mound with a ditch around it, and the earth from the ditch would have been added to the mound to make it bigger. And you would have had a wooden palisade around the top and a wooden keep. But later on, everything would have been made a little bit more permanent and more secure by making it out of stone. The Bailey is the courtyard, and later on, there was a curtain wall built around that. The castle's changed hands a few times over the years. In 1215, King John attempted to suppress his rebellious barons and seize the castle. In 1315, it was the headquarters of a group of bandits that used to kidnap people and hold them to ransom. They were later caught and hanged. It was captured and occupied by the Scots in 1318. And not long after that, in 1327, it was written that the place was wholly burnt and destroyed. I'm standing in the area of the Shell Keep. And like I said before, originally it would have been made out of wood. Out there you've got the outer bailey. And a curtain wall made out of stone was built later to retain that. There's not much remains of the tower. Most of the stone's been rubbed. You've still got the basement and up to the first floor. The walls are two metres thick. And as an entrance, some stairs here. I'm basically standing on one of the walls, which like I say is two metres thick. You've got two chambers, they're called barrel vaults, and apparently they were used as cisterns. And the stone is absolutely slippery as hell. Come on, algae. So this is the steps coming down to the basement. And there you've got the two barrel vaults. That would have been the way in. You would have had a wall here. And the reason why they say they must have held water was because there's two spouts. It would make more sense to hold water than food because you die quicker without water and if the castle's under siege, you know, water is your priority basically, you can go a few weeks without food and by then hopefully the people would have gotten sick of waiting for you to come out and surrender It's funny how there's a window in this barrel vault but not the other side and there's two spouts to collect water in the other side I think there was something else kept in here Maybe it's used the other side for water but they didn't have a window in case anybody tried to throw things down to contaminate the water What a fascinating place guys and I'm just thrilled a bit to make this my home for tonight Midfat Castle Get out and do a bit of wild camping You know it makes sense Because you do, you know it makes sense What could have used that for? Get rid of that bath water Dirty dish water perhaps or was it for pouring hot oil down on the invaders? See, that's just one big drop on the other side there. You can see the ditch that went around the mott. And over there in front of the church, you've got original furrow cultivation which came later than the castle. And over there you've got a World War II pillbox. So, 
quite a lot of history to do with Mitford. Although the castle's in ruins now, that's a tremendous amount of history locked up within the earthworks. I don't think it's been properly excavated. Over there, and I'll show you this now, is the remains of an old chapel and graveyard. I'm standing roughly in the area where there used to be a 12th century chapel, which has largely been destroyed through quarrying. And that could be a grave slab there. Apparently that's two. On the edge of the quarry. And that may be part of the chapel, right on the edge. Can't see anything written on the grave slab. That's if it is one. Now there is grave slabs in the church across the way. There was, that was a an archaeological dig done in 1939 and they found a number of graves. I'm just wondering if that could be one there. It looks like there's three holes in that possible headstone. And some grooves. But I mean it's 12th century so hundreds of years old and anything that was written on there could have just been lost to time. We'll never know. And I believe this was the garter robe. Or maybe it's where you would throw your dirty water down. Not much remains now. Medieval toilets used to be absolutely stinking and what they used to do was dry the laundry nearby because the smell of the ammonia used to kill the mites. This is part of the east curtain wall and looks like we've got a window. It's all about the views. Not that you can really see much. You've just got massive drops. Down there you've got the, the remains of the moat. Some are similar to the other side. In the shell keep. Quite a big window or doorway or whatever it was. That must have been a way in. Back door perhaps. Tradesman's entrance. Down there you've got the, the moat, the ditcher goes around the castle. So you would come in and you would have all this. The outer bailey, the curtain wall which goes all the way around to defend it. You've got the quarry which has took a lot of it away. The old chapel, 12th century. Who knows what's under all this rubble because the level was a lot lower at one time. Could be buried treasure, gold and silver. I'm just thrilled that I'm here tonight. Got the place to myself. I'm not going to have any fires or anything. It's an ancient scheduled monument. Treat it with respect, guys, when you come here. Don't pull the stones down, don't move anything. Because, you know, this is our heritage and it deserves to be looked after. That vein is just going to totally destroy the stone keep. I mean, a lot of the outer stone's gone. There you've got the, um, that's the window down to the vault, the barrel vaulted cellar. So this is a view from the top of the mott. And down there you can see part of the, the ditch that went around. Still visible. So this is the other side of the shell keep. And that there is it was restored in the 19th century. You can see how the the mortar looks a little bit newer, different to the rest of it. I 
Right guys, I'm going to have to stop waffling and basically put up my camp for the night because the sun's going down and I don't think anybody's going to come here now and disturb us. It's a nice flat area here. But over here I've got a bit of a view. Look at that arch, isn't that spectacular? Some fantastic views over to the church. I think uh, either here or just up here between the stone keep in the shell wall. Right guys, that's my bivvy set up for the night. I'll give you a look. I love the minimal experience. I love being in a bivvy. So I'm in the Snook Park Stratosphere. And I've got a Sky High 700 sleeping bag because it's January and it's freezing. I've got a folding pillow. And I've also got a sleeping bag liner, which, you know, it'll extend the life of your bag. You don't have to clean it as often. And I'm on me, the Crivet Air Mattress. It's quite sheltered actually. And I'm gonna do some cooking over here. I'm using my petrol stove, out of simplicity really. Like I say, I'm not gonna be lighting fires. And food wise, it's all dehydrated stuff. Beef jerky, got nuts, three minute noodles, and I've got some dehydrated spaghetti bolognese from a while back, homemade. So plenty of food there, and I've got energy bars, loads of coffees. So what I think I'm gonna do now is, I'm just kind of a wander around. It's starting to get dark. I just wanna maybe get some footage, you know, Maybe capture some wildlife shots or something like that. And then I'm gonna have something to eat and hopefully you guys will tag along for the adventure. Well, I'm gonna boil a brew and get something to drink. I think the pot's too small for that stove. I kind of get the flame small enough. It's just coming out of the side, so it's kind of get the handles red hot. But luckily I've got one of those flame-proof heat-resistant gloves made of silicon. I found a use for her. Illuminating the cooking area. So maybe it'll give us a little bit of extra company later when I go to bed, if you know what I mean. Looks like we've got a rolling boil there. Take the switcher off. And that took no time. It took about two minutes to boil that water. Are you alright Flossy? Hope that torch isn't causing any discomfort. You're a bad lad and you mutton do it again. Bah. Right guys, I'm gonna have something to eat. Spaghetti bolognese dehydrated.
what I'm going to do is, is just cover it with water. That should be enough. So it rehydrates, you just add a bit more in if it needs it. You can never have too many lighters because three is two and two is one and one is none. So it's better have one too many than none at all. It's fierce this. Once it heats up, it only takes a minute to start burning the food. You've got to be stirring all the time. If you're wondering where Flossie is, she's got the lip on, she's gone back to the bivvy. She'll be there lying there waiting for us later for when I gone in. Keep us warm tonight. She didn't take too kindly to me sticking the torch where the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> See there, it's bubbling away already. In fact, it just needs to simmer. That hasn't got a simmer setting, it's just constant full power. It's more for heating your food up, not for slow cooking, but I love it. You know, it runs on petrol. And it's a lot less hassle than lighting a fire, which you can't really do in a place like this, because it's, like I said, it's a, it's a scheduled ancient monument. Ah, it's looking nearly done that. sit on there for a little bit and the residual heat in there it'll just help to give that little bit extra rehydration well I've retired to me bivvy being flossy we're here for the night now it's so eerily quiet now and I was trying to imagine what you know day to day life would have been in the castle and what's spooky about it is there's a chapel just over there in gravestones, so I know there's dead bodies here now, and, it, and it's got me thinking, you know, what, there must have been important people. Before I came out, I was doing a bit of research on the history and that, and I, I did a search for uh, anything to do with ghosts, ghost stories for Midford Castle. Two children were playing around here. It was in the 1930s, and they were, it must have been getting dark or something, because ghosts didn't come up when it's daylight, do they? They were playing here and they heard screams and they looked in the scene, it was like a warrior with a sword and the screams was coming from a severed head that he had under his arm. I'm getting such a buzz camping here, it's unreal because I'm interested in the history. I even thought I'd found a hammered coin before. Modern five pence. And now we're there. That's what I love about camping, you know, you just, the sounds of the the animals and just being close to nature and like I said I had to come to bed because I was just I was trying to warm up I was walking around and I was I was like tripping over things I thought nah just get to save me bag and I'm absolutely warm now I've had I've had something to eat and I feel content and I've got a little bit of company here I've got Flossie the snuggle in too She's a stunner, isn't she? There's no room in here with her, like it's just there. Uh, she's to lie on top or something. Nah, I wait, Flossie. I've just got to switch off because I'm wasting my batteries and um, I'll see you all in the morning. morning well I'm not going to hang around guys I've got to get away the sound of the sheep work was up right around me bivvy and soon after that I heard the sound of a quad bike it was the farmer coming around to feed the sheep basically telling us that I shouldn't be here it's private property so got to get away so I'm gonna get packed up and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one <laughs>